I'd like to explain some more vocabulary terms that uh, we're going to be needing, especially in typography. And typography, again, is um, uh, dealing with, with fonts and type and how we set it. And uh, there's some terms that have kind of come from antiquity um, that we still use in Photoshop. So uh, really, we start back um, in time when uh, books were were copied by hand uh, by scribes and by monks, and um, and that made books really, really super expensive because they all had to be handwritten. So if you think about any book that you might have, a novel or a textbook, and think about how long it would take to uh, to handwrite an entire book. Um, you know, then then kind of equate that with how much you want to be paid per hour, how expensive that book might be. Um, so typically, like uh, a Bible might take a whole year to make one copy. Well, that would be um, an extremely expensive endeavor. And so that was made uh, really knowledge um, limited to rich people. And even then, the rich people a lot of times um, weren't able to read. So, um, but uh, the the invention of the printing press with Gutenberg um, about uh, in the 1450s, um, he came up with this idea of movable type and where they could print uh, multiple pages or, or uh, a page multiple times. And it was a great equalizer, probably one of the greatest inventions of all time because then uh, it made books more affordable. Now, they were still expensive, but um, it definitely uh, let another class of people um, come into the market where they could gain knowledge and maybe get out of their uh, caste system uh, at the time. So uh, one of the big things that uh, Gutenberg did was he printed the Bible, and that was super important because at that point uh, the Catholic Church had kind of uh, gone astray, and the common person couldn't read the Bible to you know, kind of fact check it. And so when the Catholic Church said something, then it was basically canon. Um, and the, the, the common person really didn't know whether it was truthful or not. And so uh, um, Gutenberg wanted to, uh, to print the Bible um, in the native tongue, and especially in this case it was German. And he did that in, the, in 1455, I believe. And that was revolutionary. Um, the Catholic Church didn't really like it. Uh, there were some other Bible translators who wanted to translate it into, uh, into English, and they were burned at the stake. So it was a pretty high stakes thing because really the uh, aristocracy and the church had a stranglehold on knowledge because of the way that books were produced. Well, then Gutenberg uh, came in with the ability to um, make movable type, so uh, made it out of, of metal and had a bunch of different letters, and then they would set the page. Um, Gutenberg's first thing, the first Bible was like 44 lines, and it took about a half a day to set the type for that one page of the Bible. Um, but then, once that was set, then um, then you could print multiple copies. So here's a kind of example of one of his printing presses. Um, but it was based upon like a letter like this. So it was carved out of, of steel or uh, lead, and most of the cases um, initially, and then they would set the type. And we still consider that setting the type. So um, what they would do is they would have a big cabinet and they would have drawers full of letters. And then they would go around and pick those letters up and, and put them in a, uh, um, a variety of different things. But like here, um, this picture shows how they set it like a paragraph, and they would have to go in and uh, um, find a, a particular letter and, and set it in here, and then they would set a whole page. Um, you notice, though, that everything's backwards, um, and there was at least an urban myth saying that uh, you've heard the phrase, uh, you better watch your P's and Q's, young lady or young man. Well, um, a P and a Q uh, would look like the opposite here when they were setting the type backwards. So you had to be really careful um, which letter you were putting in here. So uh, that was called type setting, and that's where we get our um, uppercase and lowercase letters. Sometimes we call a capital letter a capital, or you know, a big letter well, that we started off a, a uh, word with, or a proper name. But we also sometimes call it uppercase, and well, the, 
that came from the uppercase or the upper drawer had all the capital letters and then the lowercase had the lower letters. So that's where we get some of that uh, verbiage. Now, um, one of the things that I really want to talk about is, is letting. And um, Photoshop l does something called letting and where that word comes from is that space. Um, and if you can see my cursor, there would be a space between the lines and they would sometimes um, especially when we have like headlines, then you would put a headline and then you would put a piece, another piece of lead in between to give an additional line spacing. And so uh, we have control of that leading um, in Photoshop and I'll talk about that. There's also another thing called kerning and kerning um, was really not very possible when we had removable type because uh, each letter was carved out of a block. So you couldn't move a V over closer to an A than what the um, right hand side of the A would be. So that's as close as you could get to a V. But now in Photoshop we can overlap, we can remove some of this negative space and sometimes that's going to be really important. You can see that again with the W and the A. So a lot of times these angled letters, like if you had two A's um, side by side, then you would have this huge amount of, of uh, negative space and sometimes it just doesn't look very good and sometimes it doesn't add to the readability. So we have the word letting, which is the line spacing between lines. We have kerning, which is the space between a particular letter, but it's only a singular letter. So you want to do that based upon what kind of letter it was. Um, but then we have something called tracking, and tracking is the space between all the letters. So you can change the entire paragraph or headline or whatever, um, or just singular word um, with tracking. You can add spaces between there. So this uh, graphic kind of lets you, uh, it kind of reminds you of what all those things do. So letting is a spacing, kerning is one letter, and here is overall. So now if we look in Photoshop, um, I want to talk about uh, that. Um, if we want to do letting, I'm going to change this because this was really our um, project the other day. If I let's change this to tool and we can zoom in here. So we have a lot of negative space in here, and I'd like to be able to tuck um, the O in. And now modern um, tuck the O in underneath the T a little bit. Um, but uh, modern typefaces are made for digital, made for Photoshop. So they do already have this automatic kerning. But if I think if I probably drew a blue line here, the O really does not um, infringe upon the T. It comes right even. Now this O has a lot of space, so we don't have the same line spacing in this whole word. And so the, the typeface designers kind of do this, but we still have control. So obviously this is a, a bigger space than what these are because we've got a lot more negative space. So we need to close the gap here. We don't have as much negative space because this is a vertical line. So, um, but you can do some kind of creative things here. So I'm going to double click on the T and I'm going to click in between the two O's. Now, here's where the letting, the tracking, and the kerning uh, tools are, is in this character palette up here. And this is a, where we had previously went to paragraph and taken off hyphenate, and we can center and justify our text. But we're going to go to the character. And here's um, our letting, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Here's our um, tracking, and that would affect the entire word. Right here's what we're going to do is um, use this kerning and we want to just do something creative with the O here. So um, I can click on here and I can use some of these presets like if I go to negative 10 it moves everything over just a bit. But uh, I have also other control. I can go click on this VA, left click dr and hold and then drag to the right or drag to the left and now I've, there we go, kind of a little laggy. It's very laggy because I'm recording. Now let's go to negative 200 and see if it'll catch it back up. Negative 220, let's go. Um, yep. Computers are gonna be a little contrary. Let's go negative 300. 
And so we can make something kind of creative here. We can overlap, which they would have never been able to do in Gutenberg's time because they had individual letters. So um, that's, that's one way. And there are places where you're definitely going to need to kern to make things look uh, good. So now let's go on down here. I can kind of show you with this text, a bit of text here. Um, we'll select this whole paragraph. Oops. And now we'll go into uh, the tracking. And the tracking also is um, set to a default, but you can change things up. You could go to negative 20, and it actually pulls all these letters together a little bit, which makes it probably a little harder to read. Um, or you can click and drag to the right and left, and you can see how the spacing between each letter is different. So um, sometimes you do that more of artistic versus readability because I think it makes it almost harder to read when they're too far apart and definitely harder to read if they're too close together. So I'm going to set that back to zero. Now uh, here I've got still selected and I can go to the letting and the letting is um, preset generally based upon whatever point size it is right here. So it's probably 10 point um, preset letting. But if I go to 24, now it looks like I've double spaced things. And sometimes that's necessary, especially if you have long lines of text, it makes it easier on your eye if there's a little bit more line spacing. So there's some mathematical uh, ways to do that. There's a, something called modular um, text, and you can check out that on the, on the internet if you really want some kind of scientific ways of figuring out, based on like Fibonacci, um, how, how much is the appropriate uh, line spacing when the line is certain length of, of space. So anyway, um, that's, this is tracking. This is letting. I'm going to set it back to auto. And this one is uh, kerning. Now here you can just set the, the typeface to whatever size you want and whatever font you want. Um, there are some other things like a baseline shift that we can probably get into. Like if you're going to do a superscript or subscript, like doing a chemical name H2O and you want to drop the two below, or if you're doing an exponent number, you can raise the baseline up and you can do some kind of fun things. Um, but uh, right now I want to talk about letting, kerning, and tracking. Um, the other thing that I want to be concerned about is a proximity as well. And uh, in our project here with uh, Sagrada Familia, a lot of times, um, the, you might put equal spacing here. So like design is really, um, uh, really describing this paragraph here, and plan is this paragraph, but really there's almost identical amount of spacing between plan and this um, paragraph. Now, we in the West um, read from top to bottom, left to right, and so it makes sense that we all already kind of think that design is is uh, with this, but um, like uh, Robin Williams in her book states that we want to, you know, proximity um, implies a relationship, so we want to kind of group these and chunk them together. So um, we can, in this case, drag this down so that there's a little less um, space between here, maybe that's a little too much, but now this is closer to this paragraph than this one, and we would need to do that consistently. So now if we squint our eyes, and which she also recommends, um, now we've really got a chunk of information here, a chunk here, because these two are together, we kind of view them as one piece of information, and then again down here. So uh, we want to, this is where we would use that letting. Now this one I kind of manually did it because design is on a separate layer, but um, if, if it was some other way, we might use that uh, that character palette and change the letting, but it's still letting. And so if I was going to tell you, if I looked at this pay picture and I would say, hey, you need to reduce the letting between the subhead and the paragraph, you'll know what to do. Now, what technique you use is up to you, but uh, you know, in this case, all I would do is just drag it down. But think about that. Think about 
when we talk about proximity is to bring these elements closer and closer together so that that we are it's clear that plan goes with this one or or whatever project you may be working on that that you're grouping these things so that you have built this relationship between different elements okay hopefully that helps